Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. The newest flavor of vanilla is out. It's about two months old at this point, and I've been putting in a lot of time into it. So I felt like making something of a review for those who have maybe, you know, actually have gotten lives and don't have time to play. Or maybe you're on the fence and you just don't want to commit quite yet. So what is the season of discovery? Well, it's everyone's favorite flavor of ice cream, which is of course, Vanilla! But it's not quite Vanilla World of Warcraft. Some of you may be saying, ah oh, jeez, another relaunch? Didn't we do that back in 2019? Well, yes we did. Classic World of Warcraft, as you know, has been relaunched over and over and over as far back as the original Vanilla in 04 to 07 through the means of private server communities. And it was officially re-released by Blizzard Entertainment in the fall of 2019. And although it wasn't a one-for-one -one recreation, it was pretty close. And that went on for a couple of years. The Burning Crusade was announced, and that launched with the level boost. I made a one-hour video telling everybody how if the boost is coming, so is the token. Everybody called me the Alex Jones of World of Warcraft. Hey, you! Stop bullying the multi-billion dollar company! I go into hibernation for two years. The WoW token comes out and all of those people disappear off the face of the fucking planet, much like the player base of Wrath now because the most powerful item is now your credit card because they were 100% completely wrong, and I told you so. I don't like putting microtransactions in the store. That makes the freaking game do. Uh, 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 sick of this crap. I'm sick of it, it's not funny. You'll excuse me, I had a moment. But that was then, and this is now. So, the season of Discovery is set in vanilla. The level cap presumably is 60, and you level in the old world, you do the old dungeons, the old raids, but with some honestly game-changing features added. Probably the biggest of which is the rune system. When Vanilla World of Warcraft was released in 2004, it swept the world, frankly with its many innovations, its forgiving learning curve, its polished gameplay, and its rich community of non-degenerates. It was far and wide superior to pretty much every other game within the genre, and perhaps one of the biggest reasons for its success was due to its impeccable class balance. And I'm being a bit facetious here, but believe it or not, by 2004 standards, this was immaculate. Every class, for the most part, had clearly defined roles. You had tank, heals, DPS. Some were better, some were worse, some were completely useless, but they were all completely unique from each other, I think is one of the most important things. It was pretty heavily inspired from the Dungeons and Dragons scene, and the variety offered ensured that there's a playstyle for pretty much every type of player. You had a class for the tanky people, the glass cannony people, Pokemon fans, furries, and also assholes. They all interacted with each other in unique ways, and it resulted in what was one of the most polished class systems in the early mid-2000s era of the MMO, and it was, for the most part, pretty balanced. Except for shamans, which have always been completely fucking overpowered, by the way. But that was then, and this is now. It's no longer 2004, and by today's standard for some, the class balance is a little... Uh, dated, some would say. Some would say the rotations are a bit... Uh, simple. But this is where the runes come in. Um, every class in the game now gets a selection of runes. These are found throughout the world in chests, from quests, dungeons, wherever. Um, you can find these runes which, upon being learned, will allow the player to attach them to what is now currently their leg, gloves, or chest slots. Uh, there will be more slots added later, but as of right now there are four per slot, they're interchangeable at any time out of combat, and they're aimed to modernize the design and balance of the vanilla class system. For instance here, feral druids in Vanilla World of Warcraft are pretty bad. Well, I mean, in, in some situations they can be decent, and they can be useful if, uh, they... Uh, who are we kidding? They're pretty worthless. In Season of Discovery, however, 
their god tier because not only do they deal some pretty decent damage, one of their runes gives wind fury to party members, so they've transitioned from no one wants them to a guaranteed raid spot. Seriously, like, you could be a naked feral druid right now, and you would get a raid spot solely based on this one rune. So, I'm not going to go over every rune, but it's a similar story with pretty much every other class in spec. Balanced druids have their mana issues resolved with the free cast wrath, paladins can now pull from ranged with the Captain America shield, and they also have an active damaging ability with Crusader Strike, warriors have more mobility with the ability to charge in combat, some of these runes are returned from previous expansions, such as Victory Rush from Burning Crusade for Warriors, Penance for Priests from Wrath, Crusader Strike for Paladins from Burning Crusade, and others are completely new, and some classes even have new roles such as Warlock Tanks or Mage Healers for instance. So as a result, the balance and meta are pretty much completely overhauled. PvP feels very different, PvE feels very different, just Everything feels different, but sort of in that same familiar vanilla setting that everybody has come to know and love. Aside from this, we also have level up raids. Some of the dungeons, currently as of this video there's only one, and that's the Black Fathom Deeps. They've been reworked into 10-man raids, so the bosses have changed, they actually have mechanics, and they drop different loot. The difficulty is pretty easy, honestly. It's pretty puggable at this point, you do not need a raiding guild to clear BFD. Although having actual like raid mechanics is another modernization, as the vanilla raiding scene is pretty simple, to say the least. And uh, you know, this will be something that will be fleshed out later, in later phases. And speaking of which, another important thing to mention is that the Season of Discovery is releasing content in a unique way through progressive levels. So. Back in 2019 Classic, when they were doing the beta, and they were testing it, they tested it in phases. The phase 1 cap was 20, and the next was 30, and so on and so forth. And while this was done to focus test the game little by little, it created an unintended but interesting effect of elongating the journey to the max level. People explored the lower level areas more, they PvP'd at low levels through community run dueling tournaments, and it sort of reminded the community the importance of the journey in the MMO, and that's sort of a lost art in the genre today. It always seems to be more about the destination rather than the journey, and one of the major design philosophies of the Season of Discovery is rediscovering this forgotten journey rather than the destination. Shoutouts to the level boost released in the Burning Crusade, by the way. <clears throat> but anyways, uh, one of the ways of achieving this is adding new content, new recipes, and quests at lower levels, and even capping the levels out phase by phase. So in phase 1, the level cap is 25, in phase 2, it'll be 40, and then 50, 60. And while many people will be split on this, I for one like it because I think that considering that most people who quit an MMO do so when they reach the max level, shoutouts to the level boost released in DC by the way, elongating and adding more content that isn't at the max level accentuates one of Classic's greatest strengths. And it also has a good side effect because it counters the MMO RPG genre's biggest weaknesses. Aside from World of Warcraft, pretty much every single MMO ever released follows the following flowchart. There's this slow but steady buildup of hype in pre-release, New information is being dropped all the time, interviews are going out, gameplay is being shared, and everybody's getting all excited to throw themselves into the unknown, and the weeks before release it hits like this critical mass. Everybody's all edged out, and then, boom, the climax. Release day hits, the servers are overloaded, and everybody explodes out of the leveling zones, much like sperm ejaculating from a penis. It breaks records, it's popping off. For about a week or two, and then the honeymoon phase ends, the tourists leave, and that MMO settles on a pretty niche community of people who stick around, and this is all because one of the most major appeals with the MMO RPG genre is just the fact that it's the new thing. There's something very appealing about starting out fresh with everybody, and beginning this new journey equally with everyone. 
it's why, after all, Vanilla, whether through official means or otherwise, has been re-released about 1400 different times. It's all about feeling fresh. Joining an MMO that's been running for even a few months is, much like myself, it feels unattractive and bloated. And I know this because a question you will see all the time is, is it too late to start X or Y or Z or whatever MMO it is? Is it too late to start New World, Lost Ark, World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy, Hello Kitty Island Adventure or whatever the case may be? I guess the point I'm trying to draw here is that Although it's not a hard reset that you would get with a new launch, it's a soft reset in the sense that each phase has a new level cap and the gear from the previous phase will be made to be less relevant and therefore even right now with Season of Discovery being two months old, if you were to pick it up right now and level a character to 25 before phase two launches on the 8th of February, you don't really feel like you're that behind. Uh, theoretically, this should also be true when the cap is released to 50 and then also, of course, 60, where then it'll presumably follow um, the normal progression that you'd come to expect from vanilla with, you know, Anixia, MC, BWL, etc., etc. Beyond that, another appealing thing that Season of Discovery has going for it is just potential. Blizzard recently released the following roadmap, previewing what's in store not only for the Season of Discovery, but also Cataclysm Classic for the seven people who are going to play that. But at the end here, we have after level 60, end game content updates. So in BlizzCon, they teased that they had plans for content previously scrapped in vanilla. And this could mean anything. The new content could be that awesome WoW token for all we know, but I think that combining this with the fact that they're recruiting more developers for Classic specifically, it could mean that Season of Discovery could evolve into the elusive Classic Plus that many have been clamoring for for many years. But that's Season of Discovery in a nutshell. It's not all perfect. I do have some complaints. Three billion human lives ended on August 29th, 1997. The survivors of the nuclear fire called the War Judgment Day. They lived only to face a new nightmare, the war against the machines. I know that there are people out there who are willing to throw themselves into traffic to defend the multi-billion dollar company, but I'm sorry, we put men on the moon. We have robots exploring Mars. I'm pretty sure it's possible to control cheating in the recreation of a 20 year old video game. I feel like botting is like this two-headed hydra and you have to attack both heads. The bots and the RMTers, the real money transactioners, the swipers. And frankly, Blizzard is soft on the swipers. Um, they, I feel like they rarely hand out suspensions and when they do, they're like two weeks or none at all and they just take away their gold. If I had a say in it, I would say permaban. The Senate will decide your fate. I am a Senate. If people know that they risk their account, they RMT less. Simple as that. With less RMT, demand goes down, it becomes less profitable to bot, therefore it's done less. And you're attacking this problem of cheating and botting from two different angles. I also think that if they were to hire actual human GMs to monitor popular spots, it would go a long way. It's a big world, but the farm spots are limited, and it's extremely easy for anybody who's even remotely familiar with the game to spot them out in the wild. Right now though, because they are a small indie game dev, they seem to rely more on automated detection and player reports. Um, the latter actually being dangerous because if the bots find out who's reporting them, they will actually mass report this good citizen and get them suspended because it's, it's all automated. There's no actual human who checks before closing accounts, so 
you know, again, small indie game dev, by the way. Um, this is atrocious, in my opinion. There was a time where Blizzard customer support had this incredibly good reputation, but ever since around here, when they were acquired by you know who, it kind of started to turn poo poo. And now today, they have one of the worst customer support systems in gaming, it seems. I think that all of this is probably wishful thinking, unfortunately, because the bottom line is that policing your own game consistently is just not financially lucrative. Obviously, it costs money to hire actual humans. Harsher penalties to cheating is 15 less dollars a month. They certainly have the money, of course, but as a publicly traded AAA video game developer, they kind of want to keep it. So it sucks, but I think it's just something that you you have to accept. People will cheat, there will be bots, some of them will be banned, many won't. It's probably not going to get fixed, but I thought it was certainly worth mentioning in a review of the game, um, because for many people, I'm sure it's, it's a deal breaker, and I completely understand why. So, all of this is to say, Sod is pretty cool. It's not perfect, but then again, nothing ever is, except for me. I think that they've done a pretty good job with it so far, and I'm hoping that they don't ruin it like they did Classic by selling all forms of character progression in a genre of games centered entirely around character progression, but it is Blizzard we're talking about. I am certainly past the point of vouching for them, but you know, I, I, I do. I have to give wins when they're deserved, and I know I've been really, really critical of Blizzard in recent years, but so far I think Season of Discovery is a, a big W, as was Hardcore Classic and I've actually been playing it quite a bit, and um, when people ask me if it's fun, generally I tell them, yeah, it's pretty good. But aside from that, I just wanted to go over some channel-related stuff here. Sorry it's been a while since I posted videos. I've been going through a bit of burnout of editing, and um, this tends to happen from time to time, but usually what I do is I just take a break for a little while. I've been over around on Twitch, where I've been streaming pretty much every day, so I am around if you guys ever miss me, and I've also begun to multi-stream to here on YouTube as well for those of you who prefer this website, so yeah, just check around and uh, you should see some of that live streaming goodness. That being said, I do have a couple more videos already in production as we speak, so I plan on being much more active on here as well, and I just wanted to say thanks for being patient with me and not forgetting about me. Since I will be a little more active on here, and I will also be streaming on here. I have also enabled memberships on the channel, so you should now see a join button on all of my videos and streams. These are essentially the equivalent of Twitch subscriptions, and if you join, you'll receive some special perks such as early access to videos, access to my members-only feed with video updates, as well as emotes and badges and whatnot, and um, probably more stuff as I come up with it, so check that out as well if that interests you. With that though, I will end the video with this. Thank you for watching, like it if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.